The last couple of desktops I looked at came out in 2011, but the Unity desktop came out in 2010. I wonder if Ubuntu saw the way that GNOME were going to head and decided to go in a completely different direction, and oh boy did they ever. Unity was very much a unique styled desktop in terms of any operating system. Now many people have said it's like a phone interface. No, it's not really. It's The way I would describe it is making use of widescreen monitors in the best possible way. Putting more things at the side of the screen, you've got lots of space on the horizontal pane, but the vertical pane is a bit shorter. And that's where they try to free up more space. Great for netbooks and laptops, I think. So I actually quite liked the Unity desktop, and I was with Ubuntu for quite some time, and still until they started really messing things up in terms of limitations on the applications and the styling. And this is where you can start realizing when you look around at more desktops is how rigid Unity is. And only latterly in 2016, oh yeah, the current year, they added the ability to move the sidebar to the bottom of the screen. Almost every other desktop allows you to move the, the, the panels. So whilst I really like the Unity desktop, I do not like Ubuntu's implementation of the Unity desktop. And that's rather sad, really, uh, considering it's pretty much only in Ubuntu. Only recently was it ported to Arch Linux. I believe there was the idea that the other Linux distros would take the Unity desktop and use it, but it never really happened. I think there was too much of an outcry against Unity, but I don't believe that was really what the majority of people thought. I think it was the small vocal minority that didn't like it. So checking out memory usage before we get going, and we find we've used up a whopping 788 meg of RAM. Yeah, it's not exactly a lightweight system. The layout of the Unity desktop is more unique compared to other operating systems. On the left hand side, we have this Unity launcher. There are a couple of ways of selecting applications from it, either the old fashioned way with the mouse, or you can press Ctrl and Tab, or Ctrl and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to open up the respective applications. And I've just stumbled across one of the controversial elements of the Unity desktop, or more like a feature that Canonical have implemented into Unity, where you've got the Amazon shopping. Now that's just a launcher to get to Amazon itself through the browser, but there is a way of getting online results through the dash, and it passes them through to... Okay, it goes to Canonical first, but then the results go over to Amazon, and you can get shopping results, as well as other things as well. The results are kind of dependent on these scopes or lenses at the bottom of the screen. So just doing the offline searching here, we've got the choice between choosing from applications, documents, videos, music, and pictures. The Unity Dash can search around applications and documents, but what I wanted to demonstrate was finding the documents. You can see it's got a few that appeared there, so if I just start typing it, RT tree, yeah. Now, for some reason, this isn't just confined to the user's home folder, as we can find out here. So if I type in brain, it's picked up this icon here, brain party. Okay, so where is that located on the system? By right-clicking on it, we get a picture of the image, and you see it's located in var lib app icons. What? It's a strange behavior, that is. If I open up an application, find the default layout with the menu, is this, it's a global menu at the top of the screen. So rather than having it in each application. There is a switcher for that though. If I right click, go change background. We've got behavior and it's show the menus for a window in the Windows title bar. So now as you see the menus appear there. It's still making the most efficient use of the vertical space on the monitor. Something very few desktops really do successfully. Another unique feature of the Unity desktop is the heads up display, where you can navigate to the menus in the open applications. By pressing the Alt key, you can type in a command, filter, and it brings up a list of filters there are in Inkscape. Now that's a pretty short list. Let's say I'm after something more specific. Uh, let's go for jelly. Ah, matte jelly in the filters bevels. Oh, there it is. Now that may not sound like a particularly impressive feature until you start navigating around the menus and you'll find that there are an awful lot of sub-menus and a lot of items to go through in the case of Inkscape. In terms of resizing the applications, well, double-click, drops the title bar of the application. So again, it makes a bit more use of the 
vertical space. So moving it to the left hand side here, we can see you can resize to half size, not to quadrant, so that's not an option by default in Unity Desktop. I know it does have that feature though, you just have to enable it. The Unity Launcher offers a progress bar on the application icons. So let's just go to install something through the software center and a progress bar appears. It does the same for browser downloading and file copying. Yeah, another nice feature. You can drag the application icons around to move their position. Very easy and fluid desktop to use. The Alt Tab feature, you can just scroll around, but if you've got a couple of windows open, well, it groups them down until you hover over it, and then you can choose between either window. And you can use the mouse to select as well. Next thing I wanted to do is open up the Nautilus File Manager, or Files as it's called now. Let's open up a video, Bonnie M. Mar Baker. Let's pause that. Now by right clicking on the icon here, we have Media Controls. So play, pause, next, previous. Opening up a text document. Now for some reason I've managed to change the default text editor to Kate. Uh, I was messing around just trying out a cute application. One failing of Ubuntu is that it didn't render the menus correctly and actually a lot of the features correctly on the cute applications. I only wants to bring up Kate because of this uh, scroll bar. You get a preview of the code here and it sort of colorizes and helps you identify where you are in a file. So if I want to open it in the default editor, open with and then go to a uh, yeah, text editor, set as default, let's go back to it. So default is gedit and you can see it's colorized certain parts of the source code. So you have narrow scroll bars by default and although they're narrow, they do make it easily to select. Now in the Cinnamon desktop review, I had trouble grabbing the scroll bars. No such problem here in Unity, and there's no issue here on the rendering speed. I think the areas where the Unity desktop fails is on the theming. It's so rigid. I'm maybe picking at examples here, but you used to be able to make the application title bars transparent. That feature doesn't really exist now. It became harder and harder to do as the life of Unity went on. So now I think it's pretty much impossible. You can't move the close, minimize, maximize buttons to the right hand side. I'm used to them on the left hand side now, but it's still a criticism. It's stuck there on the left. There's still limited flexibility on the Unity launcher. You can move it to the bottom of the screen, yes. But overall, the real failing is the GNOME applications. The file manager here, look, no split screen viewing, no custom folder preferences. That is where I feel it's let down. Although there are better cute applications, the rendering fails on them, so you're kind of stuck. There is no perfect implementation of Unity in its current state. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.